Hi everyone, this is Julie Bruns. Welcome to the Peace and Possibilities Podcast. I want you to thrive and be happy, peaceful, and content, no matter where you are on your journey. This podcast shares stories that will show you how it can be done, no matter what your circumstances. You'll be inspired and come away with a new spark of an idea. Never forget, anything is possible. New episodes are released every Wednesday. Subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. This helps others find our content and get happier sooner. To possibility and the end. Hi, welcome everyone. So I'm here with Lou Diamond. And Lou and I met through a networking group that I'm part of, we're part of, called Virtual Five O'Clock. And it's a group that I joined in late fall last year, Lou, I don't know when you joined, but it's a really special group of people. And um, we connected and someone said, you should get on Lou's podcast. So I was on Lou's podcast several weeks ago or months ago now. And I invited Lou to be on my podcast. So thanks for joining me, Lou. Truly an honor to be here. I was doing the old V five O, giving like oh, some kind of. I think I got some kind of cool logo branding there for everybody. Yeah. But I, I think I was there on the first uh, or the second meeting. I was the first speaker actually to mm-hmm. happen at their cool. meeting. So they had a bunch of gatherings, but I was the first presenter to come Fun. in right at the beginning of COVID. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it was almost a year ago now. It's crazy. Isn't it amazing how far or how far we haven't gone? Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> I was just talking to my husband about it last night. He's like, it's "Gonna be like another six months." I'm like, "No." Oh my goodness. I know. Okay. So first question for you. Yeah. First of all, tell people what you do now, what you, I know you do a couple of different things. So tell people what you do and then tell us, did you always see yourself with the podcast doing what you do in your work and consulting now, or did you see, did you start off on a different path? Tell us about that. I love telling people, Julie, that I was put on this planet to work with the most amazing businesses, leaders, and brands and help them thrive through the power of connecting. Mm. I am a speaker, a consultant, a podcaster, and I help groups with their sales, marketing, and leadership better connect. So this superpower of mine has been something that I've always had, but it certainly hasn't been the thing that I've always done. The company that I run is called Thrive. And that is exactly what we do, is we work with these organizations to really get them to connect better so they can move onward and upward and thrive. Mm, I love that. There's no way in the world I knew that this was always what I wanted to do. Uh, It probably took a whole path of experiences of life in consulting and coaching and being a leader and a top sales performer for me to piece that all together and be able to make it most, most effective. Now, the podcast show, Thrive Loud, which is well represented in the branding behind me, Mm -hmm. uh, is actually the perfect vehicle to help connect the world to people that are thriving in their lives, their businesses, and their passions. And that's what I'm all about is decoding how people thrive. And the podcast, which you were on, and one of those thriving, amazing people, uh, as as was the people at V5O, give them their shout out. Uh, to talk about how they are helping to connect the world. And that's what I'm all about and what I love to do. That's awesome. How did you build? So the company that you have now and the podcast Mm -hmm. and everything, um, as you were trying to figure out what you wanted to do, and now that you're doing it along the way, when you weren't doing this, Mm -hmm. how were you staying happy and peaceful and content knowing that there was something more you wanted to do, but still thriving in your other roles? Yeah, I think that might be the the element of the whole thing. And that was uh, working backwards before I started Thrive. I, I worked on Wall Street for a very long time. I was there for about 12 years um, when the internet was just coming up in the late 90s. I, I ran sales for one of the companies that first built some of the first websites, which was a very fun, cool bit. And before that, I had a professional services consulting career at uh, Deloitte and Accenture before that. So uh All of that was leading me into a direction of trying to figure out how I can help people the most. And that's something I've always been about is because I loved helping people. So the, this, this path that I led myself on to, to get this business here, I wasn't always unhappy, but whenever I moved from one place to another, happiness definitely was a factor in me making that transition. And that happiness could have been, all right, I, I need to fulfill myself more. 
between my ears. I need to be working with better people. So I think a lot of my creation of new roles in my career and building upon one after the other all came from recognizing that I needed to expand the reach of who I connected with. And it started in a learning process of consulting is connecting companies. And when the internet came out, I was helping people connect virtually. Yeah. And when Wall Street came out, I always loved, I, I have a thing for the markets and I worked in client services and helping to connect the right solutions that my clients were looking for and help match them up. And I think after I kind of recognized that this skill that I've built up over 25, 30 years has been something that needs to be honed in on and in what I love to do most. So that's kind of, I'm always happy. I'm a generally happy person, mm -hmm. but I think any unhappiness would be from not doing what my purpose of being on this planet is. And if I've ever been swayed from that, that's where I have recognized a need to change it. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's very common too. When you um, just had a, a question about something you said, um, you were talking about going to the next role and trying to remain happy or happier in the next role. And maybe if that next role wasn't everything you wanted it to be, do you need more something in your head? Like, so, you, so I interpreted that to mean, so how else can I get something else of what I want if I can't get it in this role? Can I read something, right? Can I learn something? Is that what no. you meant? Uh, no. There's a fulfillment issue, I guess. Um, I'm always wanting to learn. Uh, that's, I, I think I've always been a student and, and I love being a coach and a teacher. So it's that, it's that balance between the two. So many times I think when, when you reach out, I, th I think my, my, the reason why Thrive works for me is because there is just an endless amount of people to connect with. And even though I guess there is a finite amount, but there yeah. it's, it's, it's constantly changing and evolving and who you need to connect with. So that is constantly the, the thing that needs to be moving. Recently, I've been using this expression, connecting and connections are the currency that I, that I play with. Mm -hmm. And that's the exchange of where the value comes in. So Thrive enables me to do that more often in each and every day. And the value that I'm able to give back from that and help others in recognizing how they can decode to be, to be better master connectors, which I like to, to call it, um, keeps me busy every day and keeps me always excited. And there's always something else to look forward to. So that's what I guess is between the ears or between my soul yeah. or on my purpose in the world that I play in. Yeah, no, I love that. So um, we have a couple of things in common. I didn't know you worked for Accenture. I yeah. worked for Avanade that was owned by Accenture yeah. and Microsoft. Yeah. For oh, wow. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that yeah. Cool. And um, one of the chapters in my book is called Connections. Um, it's the second chapter in my book. Let me just do a shameless plug right Shameless here. plug, peace, possibilities, um, and perspective. Yeah, if you <laughs> haven't um, gone out and, get, and got it, um, this is the paperback, the very, very first printed version, which is really cool. Um, so I have a chapter about it in my book because of the exact same thing that you just said, which was, I was feeling very disconnected in one of my roles because of the virtual nature of what I did. And it yeah. was connecting with people from all over the world every day, but like this, and never actually like, we just get on the call, get down to business, which was great. But then we'd never, we never like saw each other down the hall and hey, how's it going with your son? Hey, I heard your wife had a birthday. You know, no, we could, didn't do any of that. So I was craving that connection. Yeah. And I was like, I can't be the only one. And that's what started this whole trajectory of my career with this book and the workshops I do and the podcast, same thing. You can never run out of cool people to talk to. Are you, <laughs> I, I mean, so if you did nothing else in your life and just talk to cool fun people that love their life every day. Great. Like if that's the only thing I ever did, that'd be great. As long as it put food on the table, I think yes. that would be the good part. That's the uh, thing. You have to make money doing it, obviously. Yeah. Um, yes. But like they always say, you know, do what you love, the money will follow. I think there's a book actually called that, that I read, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so I could not agree more. Connection is like, it's like, it's like the, um, it's like the string, not just that connects us all. It's the we all need it. And I talk about that in the book, like every single human being from the moment they're born needs it. Babies need it to thrive. If they don't have it, they don't, no. their, their brains are wired differently when they're not connected literally to another human being when they're born. It's fascinating. So I love that that's um, your focus every day because it's so important. More people now, 
It's really interesting. Uh, just last week, for the first time in a very long time, as we're recording this, you know, hopefully towards this, the end of COVID, the beginning of 2021, mm -hmm. um, I did an in-person event for the first time in almost 11 months. And, you know, penetrating through this screen is mm -hmm. always a real challenge to get that energy through it. When I was in a room, and it was a socially distant, very safe setup. It was some people virtually, some people in person. Yeah. Uh, someone asked me, well, how was it? And they were asking, how was it? Because we've been, you know, socially distant for a while and there's the genuine fear of, of the virus and everything. And I was like, it was wonderful because the energy that you have in person, when you connect with others in your world, can't be replicated in this mm -hmm. environment, in the virtual way we're working. And to your point about connections, when you connect with another individual there is an energy that transfers back and forth and you have to work really hard to do it through this way. Mm -hmm. There are a few people that can really penetrate this screen at a level that really connects with you. I don't know if you've ever uh, seen an interview of Oprah Winfrey or heard how and you're in Chicago. That's why it's bringing me yeah. up to me, but she has a stare that is so intense and someone once called her on it. And she said, I have to penetrate through a camera, through a satellite into someone's television and get into their soul. I have to have that level of energy and look through it. And that's what you need yeah. in this environment. And when you get in person, obviously you can totally take advantage of that energy. And, and I, we all crave it. You, you are correct. It's not, and not even in a pandemic, we crave it every day mm -hmm. and how we utilize that connections to grow our worlds, our lives, our passions, the, the things that we care about is, is where, a lot of people aren't exactly sure how to do it well. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I come in. And that's how I'm able to help people really figure out how to master the way they connect. I love it. I'm so glad you're concentrating on it because it's so, so important. I don't think, I know enough companies don't do it, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing for my business because I just think employees, well, people running companies, not that they don't care, they just don't know that they need to be connecting people or people need to feel connected. It's just not a, it's not something you're taught in your um, management courses or your MBA program, you know, like, let's make sure everyone's really connected and engaged is it's not how it works. Right. So we need people to be doing it and teaching other people how to do it well. Exactly. Yeah. It's awesome. All right. So what did you, all right, if you had to tell someone, so I'm not sure, I can't remember if you had have kids or not. I do. Okay. Two, what is, two that two that I know of. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what advice would you have for someone, so your kids or someone even like in their fifties and, and they just, they know that they're not in the right career. What advice would you give someone that's searching for a meaningful career where they can use their strengths and their gifts to have a purposeful connected life and career? What would you say to them? Yeah, it is really challenging uh, for everybody to kind of find their purpose and the way that I formulated exactly why I do what I do, that didn't come from just one day I woke up and it hit me. Mm -hmm. That's something that's been building for a long period of time and has been really the essence of, of who I am. That takes a lot of searching. That takes a lot of understanding. That takes a lot of knowing what you're good at, what you're not good at. And, and there are a lot of hurdles you have to deal with to get through to that point. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, there's that whole, do you live to work or do you work to live? Lovely conversation. And, and, I, and I truly believe that when you are following your passion and when you are doing the thing you love to do best as often as you can, you're making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. So there's a weird part. There's a selfish part where everyone's trying to figure out what they should be doing next and what the right piece of advice would be. And then there's a selfless part, which is you need to make the world a better place and make everything better by doing what you should be doing. So mm -hmm. like that energy that you exude, the, the way you are, the, the how productive you're going to be when you're connected to that thing that you love and want to do most, which is sometimes the hardest thing for people to figure out. One of my recommendation is, is to, to seek coaches and whatnot that can help you figure out that path. Uh, the best brain surgeon in the world cannot operate on his own brain. Uh, you need to work with those yeah. experts that can help you do that. Trust me, I have coaches and people that counsel me on the things that I need. Um, and, and I'll seek them for certain advice because we don't always do the best thing for ourselves. We, you know, we, we're, we're sometimes our worst enemy. 
Yep. So my first bit of advice would be checking in with someone that specializes in understanding that career thing. The other thing is to fail miserably. Try things that you are maybe curious about doing and maybe it's going to fail and it's not going to be you, but it does something so powerful. It teaches you what you know you're good at and where your strengths are. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people don't take those types of risks because they're afraid or they're afraid to fail. And I can't tell you that you, you don't realize how important it is to fail because the most successful people in the world fail over and over and over again. I could bring every quote that Thomas Edison has ever put to bath, how yep. many times it took to make a light bulb. So you got to try new things. Yep. And the last part I would say is, and this is important, you need to really know you best. Mm -hmm. And even the best coaches, even the best consultants out there won't do that. So a lot of that, you know, you always hear, it may sound a little woo woo -y, but there's inner work that you need to do gratitude journals, writing things down, this stuff, which might sound fluffy is so important as it relates to better understanding what you succeed at and where you thrive. And a lot of this work we do when we help top leaders connect to their people, to their company, to their clients, because that messaging, which is a lot of the stuff I do for businesses applies to individuals too. And how you message and market yourself is probably as important. So part of what Thrive and connecting everything, that is connecting you to the world. So uh, a lot of that work as those places, seek someone out professionally, talk to those in the space that works and also look inside and uh, figure out what you want most out of you. I love that. It's so important to know yourself, to have that emotional intelligence, to have that self-aware, um, help have self-awareness always. But if, yeah, the sooner you can get to know what you like and don't like, I love that failing miserable miserably. As soon as you, you fail, then, okay, I'm not good at that. Or maybe you failed and you really love it. And so you try it again, but at least you're that much closer to getting to something else. And yeah. okay, that's not, that, that's not the thing for me. But I would also say to add to that, as soon as you know, it's not right for you, go, go a different way. Like, yeah. Turn. Don't, don't know it and fail and be like, ah, it's, like I did that. I, I got my, I was getting my marketing and economics degree in college, I'm like senior year. I'm like, I don't want to be in marketing. I want to teach. <laughs> And I was like, I can't change my major senior year. I have one year left. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm paying for my own education. What am I going to do? I'm like, I'll finish. It's one year and then I'll get a master's in teaching and then I'll be able to do both. And it ended up being perfect because I could teach in the corporate world. It's, it's, it's what I was meant to be doing eventually. Right. But in that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm being successful in this education, but it's, I know it's not what I want. Do I waste one more year? And I'm like, it's never going to be a waste because I can use this for something later on. So I kept oh. going, but yeah, you don't, if you don't know that. Julie, do you ever see the? Did you ever see the movie Better Off Dead from the eighties? It's a John yeah. Cusack movie. Mm -hmm. There's, it's, it's actually so simple. He, there's this crazy ski slope that he has to ski, and he gets the same advice from two extremes of people: one an extreme skier and one a real bummed up kind of guy. And he, they give the same thing: go that way, and when something gets in your way, turn. And I think it's actually really applicable for exactly that. Pick on a path that you're going to, and when something stops you and you need to adjust or it's not the right path or it's going to be too dangerous, adjust and move into the direction that makes the most sense. I love that. I love that. My dad used to have, um, he died several years ago. He used to have a, he loved the quote, remember successories, those business office things you'd have like with quotes yeah. on them? Yeah. He, um, there was a one with the sailboat and it said, um, life, you know, you can't adjust the, um, you can't adjust the wind, but you can always adjust the sails. Yeah. No, I love that. And it's same, same point, you know, like, all right, turn around, do something different, you know, adjust, try. And totally. Adjust. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Second to last question for you. Is there anything you wish you'd learned earlier in your life or your career? Huh? Um, you know, it's really funny. I, and I'll say this, this is an advantage that the younger generation has now uh, all of the importance of internal coaching, mental works, uh, mindset, um, making sure that, you know, we are just as good up here as we are physically, or obviously at the professions that we do. I think mental, uh, mental wellness and all this that you keep hearing about, which is becoming so instrumental, to the future generation, you are so fortunate that we got to benefit from a lot of our mistakes. And there's so many things, so much damage control that people have been picking up and fixing. And that's why you're seeing so many 50 and 60 year olds all of a sudden realize, dear God, I'm freaking messy with, I'm trying to do what I want to do next. Mm -hmm. um, 
so if I had known all this stuff a lot earlier, I wish that 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 would have helped in a lot of the messaging, I guess, that I that I deal with and and understand it sooner. Uh, I, I don't I don't I I needed the path of my career professionally for me to be as good as I am when I'm speaking, when I'm consulting, when I'm podcasting, when I'm helping people connect. I could not have done all of that if I didn't have the path of my experience previously. So I don't wish I did anything differently from the career path. I wish I had access to the mindset that we're all gearing the next generation of leaders to have 25, 30 years ago. I think that would have been cool. So, uh, and, and I, and I, applaud the future generation because you've, you've got some really good stuff here that's going to make you even better. And, and it's probably why they're going to live longer. <laughs> better sooner. Yes. That's my whole, the whole theme of my book is um, I wrote it because I, this is what I needed. What, like you, when I was a teenager, when I was in college, there, were, there was this, these, I mean, my, my eight chapters are all you know, gratitude, joy, possibility, connection, things that every day you can concentrate on curious, mm -hmm. you know, being curious. Another one being resilient. But the point is, like you said, if we had all of that and it was way more accessible, we didn't have the internet when I was in high school, you know, we barely had it when I was in college. Um, and we could have, I wrote it so that someone like me at 21 or 31 can say, oh, there's, there's a book, there's someone else who's done it. There's someone else who's learned the lessons. I don't, I can still go on my path and learn and get to know myself, but I can learn from other people that were there and wish they had this advice and I can take it now and incorporate it into my life. So I don't have to be wondering when I'm 50. So I yeah. say, look, like you don't want to be starting your life when you're 50. I mean, it'd be great if you were 30. I'm not saying you can be wise and not make any mistakes, but um, you can know yourself. You can know the people around you. You can know what's important with connecting and for your career, your family, whatever it is that you want, you spend your time doing. It's um, you're, you're the first person that's actually said, and I so agree, like that having all of this information way sooner and then our kids get to have it so they get to be better for it. And yeah. And higher bar now. Right. You have the excuse. Uh, well, well, and, and look, I look at it this way. Trust me, the ability, if you would have told me when I was 15 and 16 year olds that picking up the phone and talking to some high school girl all night long on the phone was actually job training mm -hmm. because uh, the ability to speak and read and connect on a telephone is something that is almost a lost art because yeah. we do so much digital communication that this type of communication, we're starting to make the move back. I don't know, uh, Julie, if you're on Clubhouse, but uh, I've become kind of addicted to it. It's a phenomenal social app. It is just your voice. And you basically, it's like party line when we were kids. Remember you'd pop, pop in and there'd be those people, but now you could see it with an icon on your phone and you can go in and enter these rooms and it's just to listen and have great conversations. There's no texting, there's no IMing or DMing or anything like that. And why I think it's great is because it's bringing back the most important thing. And that is the, the power and uniqueness and connection of our voice. I speak a lot about connecting your voice Voice also is an acronym I utilize, which is for another podcast show. Mm -hmm. But the the ability to connect in this unique way, which is what podcasting does, has kind of made a comeback. So our ability to listen and talk is, you know, coming now in that future way. Like it's almost like the audio world is really picked back up. And I think that's great. I think what's great about all these new advents in technologies is that it's just a matter of utilizing them in the right dosage at the right time for the right purpose. So it connects to what you need to do. And that is why I'm excited for the future and all that. Everyone's always said, oh, there's so many bad things. They don't know oh. this. All they're doing is on the screens all the time. I'm like, well, you know, some of them are incredibly gifted and faster and they're just doing things a little differently. Now oh. let's bring it all together and bring all these generations together. It's the first time ever, Julie, that we have five generations in the workforce all working at the same time. Wow. And that just think about how the 70 some odd year old person is to the 18 and 20 year old person now. So a real huge different differentiation in how things are working and where things are. So bringing it all together is, it doesn't really fear me as much. It, it excites me. And I'm kind of looking for, I love to it. it. It's a great, it's a great outlook. And I, I totally agree with you. It, it makes it more exciting. My husband and I were just having a conversation last night about, you know, texting and emailing versus getting on the phone. Like we're getting, it gets frustrating to be texting and you, you lose the context. You lose a, was that a joke? Or was that, you know, like, was that serious? Was that snide? Well, oh, no, no, it was a joke. And you can't tell from reading it. And, and we miss the days of people just jumping on the phone and having a conversation. And we're forcing the people in our lives to do that more. Like, go ahead and call me. Like, I'm not, 
because I rather have a conversation. We did the, I did this with my teenagers a couple of years ago. And I said, if it's more than one thing and it's like, I'm ready to be picked up to whatever, if it's, if there's going to be a second or a third test, you have to pick up the phone and call me. I'm not a teenager. I'm not going back and forth like this for, you know, 15 different conversations, you know, like yep. on the conversation. I'm like, no, we can get on, talk for 30 seconds and be done. I'm, I'm that's not how I'm spending all my time on my stupid phone. You know, I love it for technology, obviously. But they were like, they were annoyed. I'm like, no, I'm going to teach you how to have conversations and be more comfortable talking to people. And P.S. You're going to thank me for it someday. <laughs> I agree with you entirely. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Final question. Final. Dun, 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 dun. What is your, in your opinion, what is the greatest gift that you bring the world every day? I, you asked, you told me that this was the question that was coming mm -hmm. and, and it was the yeah. one that if I even had the same reaction 30 minutes later after yeah. you told it to me. Um, so I have two, can, am I allowed to have two gifts? Yeah. Yeah. So, so one gift I have is the energy that I have. And, and it took me a long time to realize, you know, there are people who are more upbeat than others. There are people that walk into a room and almost bounce off the wall. And then there are those that are a little bit, you know, a little more reserved and a little quiet. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to recognize how to channel that energy in ways that are effective, that lead organizations, that get a message across, that deliver, that deliver uh, powerful connections together. Like it almost is like, Hey, why I'm explaining this to you isn't about all about me. It's about the us. It's about the we and how we can work together. And I think I try to use all those connecting forces that I do, all the things that I help people to figure out how they can move onward and upward and thrive through this energy that I have. And, and I recognize that it is one of the gifts that I am fortunate enough each and every day to bring upon the world. And, and I, I, you know, there are days that I'm literally at 1030 at night, you should see me. I'm spent. I'm not that, I'm not that person that, you know, has tosses and turns at night. And, and if it is, it's probably because I had too much coffee too late in the evening. Yeah. So the first, I'd say that first gift is energy. The other one is interesting because I've been communicating this a lot and you're hearing me if you're listening to, you, to your program. And I say this, and this isn't just my gift, but this is everybody's gift. And this is the gift of my voice. I've always been told I have a good voice. It isn't that. It isn't about you know being a podcaster or a speaker. I certainly can't sing. So it's more about the way that I communicate. But I think it's so important. Uh, my own personal voice is that own personal thriving brand that I want others to connect with and hope they feed off so they too can share their voice and they can share their message, just like you did on, on the Thrive Loud program. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the gift of our voice to the world so people can hear what we have to offer, the energy we want to bring behind it, and the connection that we're trying to make with it. That's, that's the stuff that makes it really all worthwhile, isn't it? Whether it's in a personal relationship, whether it's in a business that's kicking on all cylinders, or whether it's just doing something you love. Mm -hmm. I think it's real important that uh, bringing your voice to the world is really important. And uh, those would be the two gifts, my energy and my voice. I love that. I read some, so it's in a book or someone said it, it's like this, um, that the, the, the possibility of you actually just existing on the planet, like the odds of, of one human being having the exact gifts and, you know, DNA, everything that you have is just it's astronomically, it, it, there's no one else even close to being exactly like you. So to the people out there, especially the younger people that would say like, well, someone's already doing that. This person has this podcast, this person has this business or whatever. There's, Every single person that's doing something similar to you is bringing, will never be bringing the exact gifts, yeah. the same ones. They will never be doing it. No one's ever going to have your voice to go back to what you're saying, your exact energy or your voice with your energy, with your message, with your lessons, never going to be the exact same. So don't let that make you fearful. Don't let that make you turn the other way and say, I can't do what I want to do. Keep going for it because everyone's voice matters. Totally agree. Right on. Thanks, Lou. That was a fun conversation. Uh, Julie, totally a pleasure. All those P's in a row, like the alliteration you got going on over there. I love I'm it. I was a big fan about it. Yeah. <laughs> excited really for your book. Glad I got to see it. Glad I got to be here and glad I got to connect with you and your audience. Really yeah, excited. Thank this, you. So. so how can people 
Um, do you work with people one-on-one? I didn't know that. I know about your podcast. So tell people about your podcast. Yeah, no. So, so anyone who wants to follow, first of all, follow me on the two most active social media channels I work on, which is LinkedIn and, and, uh, and Instagram at, at thrive loud, T H R I V E L O U D. I'm thrive loud everywhere in social media, but those are the two most active. You can go to thrive loud.com to learn all the things that thrive does work on. And yes, there are a select bunch of elite leaders I work with each quarter that I help elevate uh, and better connect them to the world and the way they want to connect their brand and their message in a unique way. I, I channel a lot of the work we do for organizations into these top performers because it is at an elevated level more so than just one-on-one. So, but for those yeah. people that fit into that, yes, they, they, they know who they are. They're, they're pretty special people and uh, they're only going to help be master connectors on their own. Right. And that's kind of what I'm all about. So thrive loud, thrive loud.com, follow me, Lou diamond and listen to thrive loud with Lou diamond and check out Julie's episode. So good yeah, a spectacular fun. conversation. Yeah. Thanks Lou. All right. Um, everyone go, go get, let your voice be heard. That's what I like to say. Let your voice be heard. I like it. All right. Take care. Thanks for listening. If you love this content, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts or whichever platform you found us on. You can get all my social media links in the description below. Help us keep the momentum going so that every person can live their lives happily doing work they love. 